is real. Okay, I will call the meeting for Tuesday, July 11th, 2023 to order. It is seven o'clock. Um, and then we can do a roll call. Okay, Trustee Brendan. Here. Trustee McGregor. Here. Trustee Moore. Here. Trustee Bradley. Here. Trustee Taylor. He is not coming. And Trustee Durfler. Present. Okay. At this time, we'll stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we will have a moment of silence after. Thank you. Uh, oh, we're down to number four. Motion to approve the consent agenda for the meeting minutes and the vouchers. So moved. Second. Moved. Joe. Joe. Joe moved. Okay, sorry. Got a motion and a second by who second? You. By Caleb. Um, any discussion? I had a little oh, yep. I noticed that um the attorney's retainer fee was a thousand, but then there was another bill for Four thousand thirty-one dollars and ninety-two cents. Is that above and beyond? And what are them for? I think that's the normal, the normal, the retainer fee. And then, from my understanding, it is the extra work that's being done with um, the different things we have going on, NEFCO, the recreate okay. department situation, okay. those kinds of things. Do we have enough then budgeted for the year for the attorney fees, or is that something built in? Or yeah, we only have twelve thousand uh, allocated, one thousand per month. We don't really go above and beyond for attorney's fees. Uh, so right now, with that with that expenditure, we're basically exhausted. Our attorneys, we're, we'd have to there'll have to be discussions with FHR and moving some money around to cover that. Okay. Yeah. Also, likely from because he's going to be having to be relied on for administrator type questions that kind of but we wouldn't have the administrator salary okay i guess it's something to consider that we're already there at our max on the budget yep okay um yeah and then i had just one other question quickly is the mural i see we already cut the check for six thousand dollars correct diane so yeah. then, and they're going to fundraise the correct the rest. They're, they're here. They're yeah. Speak yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anything else on the meeting minute or the agenda meeting minutes? What about? No. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Yeah, Public comment on the agenda items. It looks like. Carly, you would like to speak. Is it on the agenda item? Or which agenda item is it? I'm sorry. It is based on the um, uh, what I spoke on at a recent meeting that's in the meeting minutes of this packet. Okay, but it's not on an agenda item? Uh, not specifically. It's in regards to the meeting minutes. Okay. How do we generally... It, it's on it's in regards to the meeting minutes. Is that Let's go ahead and for which which uh for public safety? Yes, right for public safety. Yeah, that's that's within your authority. Okay. So do you want to speak now or do you want to wait for public safety? I can speak now. Okay. Um there's that three minute time limit. Um I'll get the time there. Sure. Um, so I spoke recently at a meeting. Um, it was in regards to um, a meeting that took place here on June 7th, and it was recorded and uploaded to the Port Edwards, the Village of Port Edwards um, YouTube uh, channel. Um, I, myself, a my child, and others um, watched this June 7th meeting. And we were very, we're very concerned. Um, as you can see in the packet, it mentioned in the meeting minutes, I explained at this last meeting all of my concerns in detail and what was involved in the June 7th meeting here that was so concerning to me. Uh, it involved um, what I witnessed and what others witnessed to be 
board members here in London, um, what I believe strongly to be verbally abusing Chief Jason Warden. Um, while uh, President, um, sorry, Betsy yeah. Mansell, while President Betsy Mansell uh, remains silent and complicit in my strong opinion. I am wondering, and so are many others, if there is anything actively being done about what had happened, what had transpired at that June 7th meeting, um, specifically if anything is being done um, about Tara Grundon and her actions that day. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a point of order. Uh, uh, the uh, constituent does have the right to speak, of course, with three minutes. She cannot single out a trustee. Okay. So I'd ask you to rule on that. To rule on to whether continue. to uphold my yeah. point of order. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, we can't discuss anything right now. It's for public comment, and we generally don't respond back. That's just how policy, uh, how the Robert Roberts rule orders works. Um, we have it noted, but there's a point of order. So at this point, do you have anything else to say? I just want to say I, I sincerely hope that there is some serious consideration in what I have said and that the board will look into proper actions to be taken against the individual. I and my, myself and others are, are very concerned and feel very strongly about this. And um, it doesn't look good for the board, um, these kinds of things. And people are watching very closely. Thank That's you. All. Thank you. Anybody else on public comment? Okay. Um, we will go down to president's reports. Number six, um, Committee of the Whole was the June 12th meeting um, that was to discuss our um, the departure of our administrator and what we are doing to move forward. Um, the interim administrator position has been posted to the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. We did have one person express interest, um, and that was last night. I passed the information on to the FHR committee. Um, so they will be handling not only this one, but any other um, applicants that do come through. Um, so I hope that one. Otherwise, Boss, have you seen anything? I haven't seen anything else coming through. No, the uh, just for everyone's knowledge, the, the post that we have, the League Municipalities monitors how many hits. So since we posted it three weeks ago, there's been over 130 hits on it. And we have a taker. So uh, uh, reaching out to the league, and I'll leave that contact information with Diane. She's able to, she can find out how many more hits were coming. Uh, in your packet, there's the two agendas for those meetings. Uh, the yeah. president sent me, I was not at those meetings. The president sent me uh, some uh, the minutes for one of them. So I owe you uh, the minutes for both of those meetings. They're pretty cut and dry. You just discussed mm -hmm. actions on hiring. Uh, so I would probably uh, refer both of those minutes to your next board meeting that they'll be done. I have yep. one done right before this meeting, but it's not in the back. Okay. And then so that was the, well, that was um, then the other one was the fire department discussion, um, which we've referred to the PFC and I'm assuming Chairman Stewart might touch on that um, later because that was a closed session. Um, at the moment, let me sit here. So the other thing, the other couple things I want to touch on is the quality of life survey that I did send out to board members last last night to review um, the results. We only had 86 surveys um, completed. 27 of those came from the same IP address. So it looks like it was the same person doing multiple, multiple, multiple um, surveys. There were a couple other identical IP addresses, but I think those were like, it was a desktop at home and two people may have used the, you know, husband, wife or whatever situation. Um, 
really 86, even if 86 surveys, that's not a, a good enough sample size. So I think we were gonna have to look out for a better way to, to grab some of that data besides just Facebook. So there's a lot of residents who maybe don't, aren't using Facebook. Um, and then we can maybe figure out a more reliable situation for one person not to fill out 27 surveys. So we might have to explore some more options that way. Um, other than that, I'm gonna take this time to um, thank Boz. This is his last meeting with us. This is his last week with us here. Um, in the past three years, um, Boz has done some great things for our village. The initiative that we're taking on um, wouldn't have been done. Um, kind of took the bull by the horns and take took a lot of initiatives to, to help our village grow. Um, you were able to secure and utilize in a substantial amount of grant money for our community that helped out and then helped develop our plans used for the fifth money and effectively help uh, revitalize our downtown. Um, so with that, I just want to say thank you. I wish you good luck on your future endeavors, and I hope you and your sweet family enjoy what is yet to come. And just to remember us in the middle of January when you're soaking up the Florida sun. Um, so with that... <laughs> I almost said another bad word. Oh, <laughs> here it is. Oh, you, thank you for that, but thank you very much. Remember us, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I mean, th this has been an amazing uh, experience leaving the military and coming to work uh, with as a bunch position. of civilians. No, it's been amazing. The, the village is amazing. The people are amazing. Uh, you all, the previous board, all great. I uh, learned a lot, and I, I hope, uh, well, I know there's two things that weren't here the days I'm leaving. I could eat next door now, <laughs> and there's a lot of dirt being pushed out front, and I'm as, as an engineer, that makes my heart warm. So uh, so I appreciate uh, being able to leave on what I'll call a high note with just two small projects and many more, and uh, you all made that happen, not just me, so I appreciate the individual help as well as all the residents that have been great from day one. Thanks. Could, could you uh, read what's on the plaque? Uh, Dan DeRay, Boss Bossard, Village Administrator, Port Edwards, from May 2020 to August 2023. Our little crest, there you go. That'll look good on your wall in Florida. I do have a lot in my I Love Me room, it grows all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Christy will be very happy. The state of Wisconsin, you know, that one sticks out. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, since your uh, <laughs> wife is a native badger, I'm yeah. sure this one will oh, be put you. behind some military <laughs> thing. It will be front and center. The dog. Yep. All right, number Thanks, seven. Guys. Committee reports. Uh, the airport commission met doing this. Um, not much to say. The only highlight is that uh, we hired Short Elliott and Henderson as a consultant on our airport master plan uh, last month, and they have done, oh, geez, probably for the last 15 years, they've been involved with the airport and smaller projects and stuff like that. And now the fund will begin, and we will. I will keep you posted as to what is in the air as far as our Master, excuse me, master plan. And next month, I won't be able to report anything on it because our meeting set for uh, June or July 13th has been canceled for lack of um, items. I, go. I know. Yeah. Shane, Shane told me, wanted me to tell you, Madam President, uh, Shane is the mayor of Rapids, and he's 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 just bad about it. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's all. Thank you. Um, Police and Fire Commission. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we last met on 620. Um, that was uh, regarding disciplinary matter with uh, the commissioners at the end of that session um, sent back a message to the uh, submitter and the board indicating the charging documents were improper formatted and uh, we gave some advice as to what the law requires, how they should be submitted. And uh, we're waiting a, a response at this point. And uh, if there's no response, we'll consider the matter closed. But uh, as as officially, that is pending for uh, as far as we're concerned. Um, the next meeting is going to be held next uh, this coming Monday, the 17th. 
and um, in that uh, agenda, we have um, review background criminal investigate or criminal background checks. Phase one of three new applicants. Um, there uh, have that's Alex Mataki and Jennifer Salazar and Cassidy Sears. Um, we have also received some recommendations from the fire chief um, as to who he recommends to fill some open position, officer positions within the fire department. And uh, those are um, Matt Fletcher for assistant chief and Kerry Smith for captain and Jeff Adley for lieutenant. So what we'll do uh, during our um, meeting is we'll... Um, uh, examine their training records with the chief, which the chief has provided to us, and we'll compare those with um, the position uh, training expectations that were set some years ago, and uh, uh, then we'll, uh, you know, have some discussions with the chief, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, that's all set for our draft agenda on uh, Monday, this coming Monday, um, and. Beyond that, I don't have anything else. Um, is there any questions I could answer for anyone? How many candidates do you have? We have, well, let me let me go back. We have one candidate that we've gone through the whole process with the exception of the medical exam and the phase two, which is like this really in-depth background investigation. And his name is uh, Jordan Fuchs. I, if you remember, I told, you about him about a month ago that he was missing in action. We were worried. We haven't talked to him in weeks. We've been calling. He hasn't called back. We found him, and he's still interested. And now we're just putting together the last couple of things he needs to do before we hire him. But we're still excited to hire him. He just has to get through a couple of things. Um, and then the, we these new three applicants, um, kind of um, more of the preliminary phases of employment. Um, but as soon as we get through their criminal investigation report that Scott Drew will be sharing with us at the meeting. Um, we will schedule interviews for uh, those folks who, if, if they're acceptable regarding criminal background. And then we go to the next phase. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Public Works Committee. Public Works, we met on June 21st. Um, just an update on uh, summer activities. The alleyways are completed. Um, some storm work has been going on. Um, the chip ceiling will be taking place here, I believe, at the end of July, beginning of August, and crack ceiling. Um, also, you can see that we are doing the project. Uh, out here in front. Hopefully that will be done in a couple weeks. They're going to town on it. And um, we also had the second street, which needs to be, we had the engineering done, but we will have to have that budgeted for next year, do that project. That's gonna be a, a bigger project. Um, other than that, our next meeting will be, I'll take a look here, it will be the 19th at 4 p.m. So I have no other update. Okay, any questions for Chairman Recky? From Public Works. Okay, thank you. Uh, Parks and Rec Committee. Madam Chair, I'm going to ask for your permission to defer to a non committee member, our outgoing village administrator. Uh, we got right on uh, the person that was acting chair while I was up north working hard is not here to talk about what went on at the meeting. So um, I do need your permission to go to a non board member and I would like Boz to, sure. since we're talking about the mural. Yep. So. And Jen, please chime in. Absolutely. So uh, uh, Parks and Rec met, uh, we had the Wood County Leadership Group was here, presented their mural case. You should have a hard copy of the mural. This was what they left with us from the artist rendering. So if you remember that side wall, carve it up in three parcels. This is the first segment, there'll be a middle and then the far end. Eventually, the potential that three murals. 
very well designed, we thought. The uh, committee uh, enjoyed the thing. The only addition was adding a, uh, a logo of the established year. It should be on your copy there. They added that as well as in the top corner for the village. So uh, that was approved by the committee. Uh, what the motion is, is, is really approving the concept sketch because the TID grant was already uh, approved at the administrator level and also vetted by FHR uh, for the financing of this, which we came up to a uh, a $12,000 worst case scenario cost for the entirety from the install to the the uh, uh, maintaining of it for with a seal, seal coat type thing. And, uh, and the discussion that the committee was that if the village could participate in a 50% uh, grant, then the committee or the Wood County folks leadership would uh, don't uh, raise fundraise the remainder from some of their big donors uh, uh, that uh, and I'll, I'll I can let them speak specifically on it. So before I get into the motion, any questions on the mural or comments? I can let the Wood County folks speak. Yeah, you know, uh, Colonel, if our fifty percent is raised by. Is that the, the grant you're just talking yeah, about? Six thousand. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we, we uh went with the TID economic grant artwork amount. And uh once it was presented, uh, I presented that to the FHR folks and they were comfortable with uh, that being the amount and the grant, but it was based on they were able to raise the other six thousand dollars. Yeah. Thank you. And the reason we cut the check early is because to get the artwork going and and lock in the artist. We needed a down, down posit, and they didn't, they weren't ready to execute that right now. So. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, anything to add? If you don't mind, if I go off table. Anybody have an objection for them no. to off table? Okay. Go you ahead. too. Anything? Um, yeah, just that we're really excited for um, the opportunity. And for those that I haven't gotten to meet before, my name is Nathan Flim. I'm the marketing sales manager at the Wisconsin Rapids Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, and murals we've seen we have seen um, in our industry have been a huge drop, especially after COVID. Um, people want to get outside and just see nice things. Um, so that's why we've been pushing for this mural. And um, yeah, our plan is to reach out to some donors. Um, we have started communications with Solaris um, because they're directly involved being uh, inside on, on that wall. And um, we have some other contacts we're reaching out to and slowly starting to do that donor outreach. We were just waiting on final approval of the design before we send that to those donors and say, this is what we're hoping to make. How are you going to help type thing? Any questions for that? So that being said, I'd like to uh, ask for a motion to approve the mural concept sketch and support the use of matching fund grant of $6,000 from the village TID Economic Development Grant Program. <clears throat> I'll I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. Thank you. So we have a first by Grant and a second by McGregor. Any other discussion on the grant? Or the artwork? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. And then the last two points was uh, the village calendar for July 2023 was uh, approved. Uh, the main event is just the Lions picnic coming up. Uh, and then there was a discussion on the whole DMI Riverwalk bike trail. I believe the, the, the intent is a possible reworking of the legacy grant to ask for uh, an addendum, I'll call it, that uh, we can uh, utilize that funds uh, to, to, to improve our existing bike trail, as well as take it possibly a different route. I, I don't want to get ahead of the next meeting, but uh, that was the intent. What is on the table right now is that DMI was uh, allowing the ability to just run right down the main road, uh, put a fence up on both sides and connect to the back road, the old highway, and then run it up in Akusa. The only new news after the, the committee is that DMI is willing to pay for the fence since it's a fence that will be removed. And I was telling them that that's a hard thing for us to do, spend a lot of money on a fence that we're just going to tear down in a few years. DMI came back, says, we like the idea of you putting a bike trail through and we'll pay for the fencing. So that may be a, a good discussion to have at the next committee meeting, because then that saves us close to $75,000 that they will pay for. Does that follow the old Wisconsin River Drive through the, yes, sir. through the, it'll connect to the back gate, filtration road, 
and it will pick up, go by the, the sanitation plant out to Urco. So uh, the fencing that's right here on both sides of the road, Wisconsin River Drive, uh, it's about $75,000, $80,000. PMI was fully willing to, to commit to that. And then all our legacy money would be used for is for the resurfacing. So that'll be in discussion at the next Parks Committee. Can I ask a follow-up? Yeah. Why are they willing to pay for that? They, they want... They want some progress going down there, and they like the idea of a, a, a access point. Uh, they have a, uh, it's not too tied into that. They have a, I was going to talk in my report, they have a project manager. They're going to start demolition work this summer. Okay. So there's stuff going on there, and they thought this would be a good thing to actually get. The work they're going to do is going to be demo. This shows that there's something being built, and that's kind of what they're excited about. Okay. And that's all I have. So, if you have any questions on parks and rec, we've been demoing for seven years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, believe it when we see it. Yep. Anything else for parks? It was a very easy one for you. Yeah, anything else for parks? No, I thought it's a wonderful job. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, chit committee. Pit met July 5th. We had lots of NEPCO conversations. Uh, one of the Big one, we're having some preliminary conversations on the HOA road, what options we may have, um, what options we may not have, uh, how we could proceed. We are waiting and going to see about getting the attorney that has been helpful in that and joining us at our next meeting. We also discussed the update on the lake transition just a reminder for everyone, nothing will change in 2024. We will start to receive taxes from them 2025, January 2025, and that will be approximately 250000 annually, which will be approximately 40% of our revenue. Um, Jill, did you say something? No. Okay. Um, then the Lake District update, I was late joining on that call. Did, what was the, when are they going to start with the weed cutters? They started today, fix them. So they're repairing where, them. Where are they going to start with cutting weed weeds? Cutting. Uh, they're hiring a person tomorrow. I don't see them cutting weeds probably till late next week. And they're going to start on the east side, the uh, county park side. Okay. Uh, two days cutting on that side, two days cutting on the west side. So we had... We were going to wrap up the chapter eight ordinance, but we, the, our attorney said he had some concern with the language. So we held on that. And then on chapter five, we were ready to wrap that up, but we had questions on where his thought process was it was coming from. So we're tabled on that. So with that, we did work on, and we're bringing a motion today. I'll make the motion to approve the language regarding the donations policy for the village. Okay. okay. Motion by Brendan. Do have a second? A second. Second by Norman. Any discussion on the donation policy? Yeah, I'd like to kind of know about it. It's quite lengthy. It's in the packet. Well, I mean, just a, oh. a one paragraph summary. Let's see now. Because I don't believe we ever had one before. No, no, that's why. Okay. So it was at the recommendation of Nick that basically anybody, um, whether it be you know one of the mills, anybody, a nonprofit, an organization, a school district, anything. We would, with this policy, number one, bring it before the board, like say somebody donated a bunch of books and we looked at them and said, this is not really gonna work for us. We would then bring it to the board and, and say thanks or no thanks. Um, or what would the cost be to maintain in the long run, you know, weighing how helpful that would be or if it would be too much of a liability. This is the very short version, sure. but, and then we would, um basically document it okay. decide on it and docu document it how does that affect a group like legacy i mean you, you, i guess what i'm getting i have no proof of this but it's just a legacy is a grant right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that would be different well yeah but there's some people that might donate kind of substantial money is this going to scare them away some 
people that want to donate? You think, I mean, I don't know. This is all new to me. I think that, like, especially in the substantial money, they appreciate the tax benefit. You, you know, and, and there are places that will ask that their information would be kept private. So it's, if they want it that way, you know, for a private person like that. Then my last question, Madam Chair, would be how long has the committee been working on this donation problem? Mm, I think, well, we didn't have it last month. So... I don't remember. I sent it right May. after. Yeah, May, May and June. May and June. months that mm -hmm. they worked on it. Discussed it. I have a question. Um, yeah. So now, like, a lot of people I know have donated flags for Wisconsin River Drive. And people have donated benches that have been out here, memorial benches. Is every time somebody make a donation of a flag or a bench, is that coming back to us that we have to... Except I think approved, there's a or price point just... in here, and I don't remember below 500. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Supervisor much? below 500 or below a supervisor level, supervisor level employee can accept, and then from 500 to 2,000, the village administrator. Yeah, so 2,000 or 2,000 is a cap. Her, her example of books was a little <laughs> construed. <laughs> oh, I'll let you well, expensive well, books. Um, I don't know that we put a 2,000 cap. It's, yeah, it's in there. It's, it's, it's a, a B, number. C, D, E. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to second page. Two thousand well, or below. We need to. I don't know that that. Why would we? What would we do after the two thousand? Then it's a board action. So yeah. two oh, thousand. It's not a cap. Okay. It yes, just says yes, more than yes, two thousand. Yes. Okay, I'm with so you. So this is on the same playing field, sort of like with state grant, or when we uh, put out bids for something. It, so if it's under two thousand dollars, you can a, approve it. Sure. Your and administrator over, is in departments, yeah. And then over 2,000, we'd have to, it'll, okay. It'll come to this board for, do you want to accept it? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Anything else? Does that answer your questions? Can I ask something? We're not as slow as your look over here. <laughs> huh? Yeah, so someone would come into the office with a $500 check as a donation for the police department or fire department. And we have to say, oh, we can't take that. We have to check with the administrator. <laughs> Um, or was it more? Well, 500, you can take it. Well, 500 <laughs> <Yeah. one. Okay. laughs> and I think cash donations, are, we weren't that separate. Yeah. Offers of donations of cash or items valued at 500 or below may be accepted by supervisor level. Employee. But yes, to answer your question, 501, yep, it, it go to the village administrator. So we would know. Turn it down right then or take it not turn it down, to but it. Just um, communicate that we'll have somebody call you to receive that and allow so not take the check until I don't know with inflation, should we make that a thousand? <laughs> <laughs> I was being serious. You don't so Diane's bring up <laughs>
It's alcohol, he just says uh, the all regulation is, is similar to his. Uh, we're banning a employee from utilizing alcohol on duty, not the physical location. His recommendation is you want to deal with locations, be it shelters, be it this building, wherever. That is addressed in an ordinance language, but not in the employee handbook because there's many examples where uh, at five o'clock when I'm off the clock of my employment and there's an event here with Erco or anything and they're serving alcohol and we allow that as a part of their rental of this space, then if you have that employees can't drink anywhere on Village Park property, then it becomes a 24-7, 365, and that just becomes an administrative nightmare. We're always sending out exceptions to policy for individuals. So his recommendation is address it while on duty. And if you want to go more stringent on locations, treat it in the ordinance language. And that's what he sent back. So I think we kind of concluded we may work on that later because um, we do have it in our ordinance that already outlines it for the parks and whatnot. So anybody that rents a building in the park, they're gonna have a party. It is in the ordinance allowing that. So we, there, it's kind of conflicting at that point. The top of the policy says there's no alcohol on village property or village or in the workplace. Yep. So that still covers it, that there's no alcohol in the village workplace. But then according to the ordinance, it is allowed in parks, but you can't let go walking out of the park. You can't be walking around. So we're kind of covered. So, um, Again, the top of it does say no alcohol or how does that word that no alcohol or I just said alcohol free workplace. Does it say drugs too? Yeah. yeah. First drugs. So and then what we and Nick was clear on the legal aspect of that, or was it insurance also? Yeah, I think the insurance trained in too, but so it does cover it, no alcohol in the workplace, which would cover on hours, off hours. If you go to a party or something in our, you know, rented buildings, that would be different. That would go under the ordinance. Any other discussion on the handbook? Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor for accepting the employee handbook? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That one carried.
Okay, it was also brought up um, a motion to recommend the base on performance evaluation of three public works employees, uh, one grade level. This was a take effect on August 1st, 2023. Um, Dave Mock would move up to grade two. Kayla Presley would move up to grade three and Brady Riemann to grade four. This is usually um, after an employee has been here for so long, these are common performance uh, evaluations and upgrades. So moved. Okay. Second by Zerfman, second by Zerfman. Any other discussion on that? No? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And we will meet on August. Third. Third at four o'clock will be our next meeting. Okay. Other than that, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. Public safety committee. Okay. Um, we had a we had two meetings in this last month. Uh, starting with a special called meeting on June twenty second, and that was to um with one item to discuss. I'm going to have Boz recall the nature of, of the reason for the special call. There was uh, a temporary suspension of, of some duties with a, that needed to be addressed pending a, a discussion from oh, it was public safety. Boz wanted to bring forward the um, recommended addendum to an SOG. Yeah, the uh, at, at the yeah, but public, what was I was going to say? What was what prompted that? What well, was the, the public action? safety meeting? There was a, a directive that present a, a chief driven uh, policy to address the concern from the public safety meeting, and rather than wait thirty days for the next public safety meeting to not put them in limbo, the request was to get a special meeting call that if to see if his recommendation was acceptable to the committee. And that's what drove the meeting. Yeah. Facial hair, CBA right. mask. Well, I know the content of the meeting. I just, yes. it was yeah. what was, it was led just, up to it that I needed yeah. refreshing. Yeah. So um, the discussion was uh, facial hair um, with the firefighters, um, plus a proposed policy adjustment from the fire chief. He presented that uh, policy, uh, uh, a, um, an amendment to an existing uh, uh, standard operating guideline. Um, there was no action taken, uh, but out of that meeting, we did um, give a directive to do some research with some OSHA offered alternatives. And uh, that research was done by Boz and by Assistant Chief uh, Tim Leverance. And we haven't received the results of that yet, but um, the alternatives are limited and not exactly a one to one. And but will that will be brought up to the next uh, our August meeting. So that was that was the one topic for the special call uh, for our normal called meeting July 5th. Um, Chief Drew uh, gave his report. Um, the uh, he says no new information on the School Guardian Act grant. That was a grant he heard of uh, for the federal government to take some, I think it was CIA money, uh, yeah. CIA money for, um, to put a um, SRO. SRO in every school. Thank you for the words. Mm -hmm. SRO in every school. So he said no information on where that is. Um, uh, both uh, department chiefs have been giving us Lexapol updates. Um, and uh, for the fire department that we have a uh, a goal to get the uh, Lexapol uh, policies updated before the uh, license, uh, not really license, uh, renewal comes in January. And so was that, uh, Chief Warden, was that presented last, can I, can I go off table to ask him a question? Was was the, uh, well, Lexapol's were they yeah, received so yet? Yeah, we were finishing the 
the copies. He's been making ten okay. copies of Sorry. that book, and and Chief will pick them up for all his white shirts. All yeah, first. that wasn't what I was going to ask you. I was actually going to ask you bylaws. Was that presented at the last meeting? The bylaws, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was the question. Was bylaws. Um, and still waiting on new parts for the new squad. We have a new squad, but it's not yet outfitted. We're waiting for those parts. Um, and both chiefs were also um, asked to compile some information on the requirements with their equipment, um, knowing already that part of their uh, process of uh, getting new equipment also involves, they, they you generally know the expiration of things too. So just, we wanted to make sure that it was a, an accumulative list um, that was based on a conversation, concerns about tires, but through uh, the report, they seem to be compliant uh, with the standard um, requirements for fire truck tires. Um, a big discussion was the EMS budget, um, prompted not only by the <clears throat> of our ambulance service through the Wisconsin Rapids Fire Department, um, but also uh, we're going to be looking closely the next couple of months at the current year's uh, expenses for EMS because it is a very expensive part of the fire department. And so we have a few options of what we can uh, do. Um, the options as listed here, no changes, just augment the budget at that time when we look at 2024, cancel the coverage uh, or reduce the call rates or cost for the EMS calls. And we will be reviewing the next three months for future discussion as we enter into the third quarter of this year. Um, facial hair, the conversation continued into our regular call meeting, um, but that prompted us to um, invite uh, April Hammond, who is the District 2 Fire Prevention Coordinator, uh, to come to our next meeting in August. Um, so that we can get an interpretation of the laws and perhaps some practical uh, things that we can do with regards to facial hair and and uh, masks. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I suppose, yeah, so um, we hope to uh, get a final draft of the fire department bylaws by next meeting to approve uh, and send off to the board for approval. And um, that was all for the public safety. Thank you, Madam Chair. You had your hands up at the same time. <laughs> well, go ahead. No, you can go and get older. Yeah, but you were the assistant <laughs> chief and you all told me what to do. Go ahead. Okay, I just had uh, one thing, Caleb, is we're still waiting for the parts for the new squad. My um, assumption was that maybe I'm wrong. That we're waiting for a radio that was not going to come in until the end of August. And you know that is right. It was the radio part. My th question is, why don't we take the radio from the old car and put it in there, and get rid of that old car before it nickels and dimes us? Because you know, I looked in the expense report. We have a two hundred and some dollar um, tire repair on the old squad. We have a brand new one sitting there, not in use. I. I guess maybe if you can bring that up at the next public safety, I think that we need to get rid of the old equipment before we start um, having more major problems. I don't know how many miles are on squad. Well, it would be one or two, but I think we need to get that in service. And if we can take the radio and put it in this other car, I think that we need to do it as soon as possible and get to get things rolling. Okay. Just a comment. Yeah. Other than that, I have nothing. Right. And we, um, our next meeting is August 4th okay. at 4 p.m. Well, can you go, go off the table to ask the fire chief a question, reference the 40% increase for EMS service and that was... Without objection. Chief, uh, just, I know you can't give me a basic price, but is there a, an average of, uh, you know, them coming down for EMS call, you know, like if it's $100, you know, 40% means it's going up to 140. But this isn't something that you would really be looking to not have them come down and serve service anymore, would it? Were you talking about the first responders? Yeah. 
I mean, the ambulance, rapid ambulance, that's a forty percent increase. Yeah, that's 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 their increase. Yeah, I, I have no control over that. No, I know that, but that wouldn't make you want to look elsewhere for uh, ambulance service, would it? I mean, the options always there. Uh, we've been very happy with rapid ambulance. Their their coverage is top notch. Um, we've been how long have we been with them now? Five years. Yeah, somewhere around there, four or five years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, didn't give you a clear statement. No, it's but, fine. I, I don't know if you meant, you know, forty percent. <laughs> you meant forty percent increase on our end, or? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I guess I just have one more thing uh, with Mr. With Trustee Zerflu's comment. Um, it might not be. I know that there's United. Would it be a bad thing for the public safety committee or the village board to, I yes. guess, shop around? It would be a bad thing. Well, it's kind of like cable or anything else. I think that we should at least let them. Do you them... want your cable on or not? That's the bad thing of it. <laughs> you can always ask the question, but yeah. we can make that decision. Yeah, or the other thing is, is, if we go outside of our village limit, then we need to charge for EMS. Or not EMS, but uh, first responder. I don't know how many calls are outside the village limits. I guess I'd have to look at that. So we do get reimbursed for some of that. All of it? Some of it? No, that's no. a different. Um, so what do you want to go I'm sorry. If you could just answer those questions. Yeah, we do um, charge one municipality for coverage outside our area, and I'm working on that. Okay. Thanks. Make sure it's 40% when you change. <laughs> 60? Anything else for public safety? Nope. Or no nope for me. Anybody else? When I was chief, guess who took the lead on all replacement of squad cars and purchased the squad car? Don't lie, you were taking the lead on putting new shoes on the horses. Yes, ma'am. Planning commission. Can I use that in a while? No. <laughs> Any update on Neffco Lake transition planning? Uh, update that that needs to be migrated back to Pitt, or if we're going to create another committee that just needs okay. to, without an administrator, you need to okay. going to hunt to that. Okay. Um, number eight, any unfinished business from previous meetings? Okay, new business. Any new business? Going yeah. Okay, report from the village administrator. You have your uh, July report, which is from June. Uh, staff were down one as, after this report. Uh, but uh, all our temps are on board and uh, working away. Uh, no issues with our payroll. It's still being executed at a uh, pretty good rate for the year, so no issues there. And we talked about the administrator application. Uh, public works uh, mentioned in brief. Uh, bottom line is after all this work is done, we're probably about 30% completed up front. There'll still be a $50,000 uh, remaining for what we've allocated for market street development. So that'll be a discussion that public works will have. If that just stays in the TIF account or gets allocated to another market street project, alley, something. Uh, police and fire, self uh, explanatory on their numbers. Village budgets on track. Um, the department heads were given the, the 2024 guidance, budget guidance. You all got a copy of that for situation awareness. So they're working internally numbers. And then uh, the recommendation is that they will be bringing to their next committee meetings their department budgets. Uh, for you all to look at and start uh, discussing line item issues with that. Uh, the, the shared revenue has been approved by the governor, so it's good. So we're confirmed on an actual amount for next year. Uh, pretty, I mean, it's a decent amount. It's uh, it'd be in the 60, uh, 50 to $60,000 range in addition to what we've been getting shared revenue. So that'll just be additional revenue that will be looked at come budget time uh, to talk to the village budget. And the good thing about that is it'd be pretty easy to calculate that once the state in the summertime puts out their estimated sales tax revenue for that year, 
you can simply just do a mathematical calculation and whatever that percentage is, we'll get that much more. So it'll it'll start indexing over time that it'll only be a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars, but at least it's going up instead of stagnant. So good on them. Um, we had the Nepal Lake District meeting, so they are fixing the weed machines. They're taking care of that now. There's no need for village assistance. Uh, talk with Diane as employee status because of the short weed session, weed harvesting session, and because of the, uh, since the village has been removed from the acquisition of the weed machines, we've recommended to the, uh, the district that they hire the person on their own, either the contractor or whatnot. So it gets us out of the employee management business uh, and then they can handle that and uh, they're, they're moving towards that. Uh, so really, other than just a seat on the board, which the president's going to be the, the new member of that board, uh, we're really just going to observe wheat or uh, like district issues moving forward. Uh, if you look in the window at 241 down there, you see they're doing some adjustment work on the inside for the mail depot place. So he's moving out, which is good on them. We have no interested uh, uh, proposals for the middle section yet. And uh, right now we're still having discussions with Mr. Fidel on any interest in 231, the one right next to him. He's basically shifted from uh, us doing any work towards it to an as is number. He's been given that number. Now he's figuring out financially if he's able to do that. Uh, and that'll be then purchased outright from the village as is. Across the street, uh, we are in the final phases of HVAC and plumbing work. I will meet with them tomorrow, uh, the, the owner, and discuss uh, the next stage. And the only th and then Nick has the uh, the lease agreement in final draft, so he'll get that back to the village for a signature. And um, in our discussion, and Diane, we talked to our auditors and whatnot yesterday or Monday. In our discussion, uh, it's tied to this because it's a big chunk of, it could be a big chunk of this. I, I think we're leaning more and more that the staff recommendation to you all is at the TIF end next year. There's some concerns with not only lease payments long-term, uh, a potential sales here that will generate $135,000 to the village, that if the TIF is still active, that money has to go back into the TIF. It does not sit in general revenue. So that's a concern from the auditor aspect that they're they're highly recommending that if you guys really spend down your TIF, it makes all sense to close it next year, audit it, be done with it. And then any revenue past that point, once you close it, be it from a lease, be it from a sale, then it truly goes right into revenue for the village. That'll be definitely a re recommended discussion at the FHR level that y'all need to be having when it comes to the TIF account. But uh, they're still looking at a September, October time frame for opening uh, for across the street there for uh, the Mission Coffee. Uh, no news on the vibrant spaces. That's that's for our green space here. The only update there, that was WEDC grant. That's a $50,000 grant to help with transitioning that space down there. Uh, Solaris did show an interest that they would help us with not only that space, but providing the Wi-Fi for our district downtown for anyone outside. So once we saw the mural, uh, I sent them an agreement that we will be responsible for that mural longevity wise to make sure it doesn't go into shambles. And since it's on their building, they were very happy with that. And they said now they will be able to look at uh, what we want to do here, if anything. So this will be a parks and rec discussion that they'd be interested in helping us there with either a seating, a gazebo, whatever, turn this into a mini park down here. A what? A gazebo. 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 <laughs> Just check. All right. And, and then uh, right on. and then and then added to that would be uh, free Wi-Fi for anyone in the downtown. So good on them. Uh, I know we talked donations tonight. Uh, this will be an ongoing discussion with uh, not only public safety with but uh, FHR. Uh, the Firefighters Athletic Association had a meeting last week after the discussion with the emergency vehicle purchase, and they uh, dropped off a $7,000 check uh, for the use for the down payment. And the, the, what prompted that is uh, in their research and the, per, the information they were providing the Public Safety Committee is that there's about an 18 to 24 month lag time on new vehicles. So for the village, if there's any appetite to get that new vehicle, 
need to put a down payment now. They knew that it would be a hard thing for the village to uh, come up with that much money out of budget cycle. They they basically gave that donation. Uh, so that'll be a discussion that FHR and the board will have to move forward if that makes it into the 2024 budget for a new purchase. No changes on permit, or it, there's been some changes. Uh, we're, we're still cracking away with some building permits and so on. And the last thing is the uh, Lions picnic, uh, the big event for this uh, this month. Or, yeah. Any questions? I'd like to ask for a motion to approve a temporary class B license for the front of firefighters at the election for one day only. We got a motion from Brendan. Second. Second. Second by Red Any discussion on that? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. Anything else, Diane? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, number 12, trustee comments. Anybody, anybody have anything? Okay. Hearing none, uh, the committee meeting calendar for the next 30 days. Um, Jennifer, did you have something? I do. Oh, um, right. or, no, for the dates. Oh, okay. For the dates, not for comments. Just a reminder, Park and Rec will be down at Edwards Alexander. Bring your flip-flops and your running around in the water clothes. You're right. I thought it was the second. Mine says the third. <laughs> Colonel, for shaking your head, I'm going to go and get wet and I'm going to take a picture and send it to you. Under the splash pad. Put that one in your wall. Yes, Jen. <laughs> Two things. Just a reminder that the rain date for um, the Lions event would be the same date of our meeting. So if the rain date happens, we'll be here. Sorry, Joe. Um, and then, <laughs> what was this? Really <laughs> lions the the lions the has their 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 family night, their community That's events right. the day before, but their rain date, if they get rained out, would be on our meeting day. Are you asking or telling? I'm telling. Okay, this is just like being at home. <laughs> Thank you. And Sharon. then one other thing. Yep. August, the public safety meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, but it says August 4th. Isn't it should August be the second, not Friday. The yeah, okay. it should be the second. Uh, right to the end. <laughs> right to yeah. the end. Two you want to make I'm sure sorry. Throw me under the bus. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want you to show up. Hold on for FHR. What time? Because we've heard of a couple different times. For the exit interview tomorrow? No, no for August January. 3rd, 4.30 August 4 still? 3 August 4.30. We, or 4, whatever works for anybody, I'm good. Um, okay. Let's just make a decision. 4 o'clock. Okay. At least it's consistent okay. with the other ones. Okay. I'm not sure that helps. And ours is at 4, right, Jim? <laughs> yes. And then tomorrow. Okay, yes. anything else? Tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is 3 o'clock. Is, is it 3 tomorrow? Okay. Okay. All <laughs> right. Anything else from anybody? No. Okay. Then I will adjourn without objection. I will adjourn the meeting at eight oh four.